What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about intermittent fasting, but this time it's a little bit different spin. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, for algorithm. So this was a paper published in Cell. This paper looked at people undergoing an eight week weight loss phase doing either a control diet where they just basically had them eat their normal diet or two forms of time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting. One was an early time-restricted eating where they basically said you can eat as much as you want between 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. and then fast from 1 p.m. till 7 a.m. the next morning. Or it was a late time-restricted feeding where they would eat as much as they wanted from noon till 6 p.m. And they called that late time-restricted eating. And then they looked at weight loss, fat loss, lean mass loss, and a bunch of other like biomarkers of health, like blood lipids, uh, hormones, blood pressure, heart rate, a litany of different tests. So I think this is one of those studies where the headlines would be way sexier than the actual outcomes. And in this case, uh, I think the headlines are gonna be something like, early time restricted eating is way better than late time restricted eating for improving insulin and blood pressure and some of these other things. So what did they find? They found that both groups lost similar amounts of weight compared to control. There was a trend for greater weight loss in the early time restricted eating group, but it didn't quite reach significance. I'm gonna talk about why I think they probably found that. There was no difference in fat mass. There wasn't even a difference for trend in fat mass. So both groups lost the same amount of fat. Now, the early time restricted eating group actually lost more lean mass that they assessed by DEXA. Again, I'm gonna get into that and why I think that happened. And they found a few other small differences in the study. So what do they find with some of these biomarkers? Well, the early time restricted group had improvements compared to control in fasting insulin, systolic blood pressure, pulse pressure. There was some change in, in thyroid hormones, but not really big. And the important thing I wanna point out is, this is why it's important to understand statistics. So the early time restricted group had a decrease in insulin, for example, compared to control. Same thing for blood pressure. But there was no difference compared to the late time restricted eating group. They're not misrepresenting what the results were. However, people who do the headlines are gonna compare the two straight up, when in reality, the statistics comparing early and late time restricted feeding showed absolutely no difference for most of these variables. Insulin was no different, systolic blood pressure was no different, but compared to control, early time restricted eating showed a significant improvement, whereas late time restricted eating did not. Now, it may sound like semantics, but the distinction is important. We really can't conclude from this study that early time restricted eating for those things is better than late time restricted feeding. Here's where I think a lot of people might miss the boat. When they looked at weight, body composition, blood measurements, blood pressure, they were doing that in the morning after an overnight fast. Well, the late time restricted eating group fasts for five hours less than the early time restricted eating group. That's actually kind of a confounding variable and may explain why there were improvements compared to control in systolic blood pressure and insulin because they fasted longer. It also might explain why the early time restricted group had a trend for more weight loss as well as significantly more loss of lean mass. Again, if you fast for longer, you lose more total body water while it would be tempting for me to say, well, see, early time restricted eating causes more loss of lean mass. I don't really think that that's probably true. I think that many of these differences might be explained by the difference in the fasting window. Now, this is no disrespect towards the researchers. I think how they did it is probably how most researchers do it, which is you're very constrained by the time period you have in lab. You're very constrained by, if you're taking blood samples, some universities require you to have a physician there or a phlebotomist and you might be under their clock. Like people don't realize that you're so constrained by what you do when you're looking at research. But if I were designing the ideal study to test this stuff and compare these things straight up, I would want the fasting windows to be equivalent. Additionally, one of the differences they did find was that the early time restricted eating group had a significantly lower midday hunger score. Let's just file that one under the no duh category because Da, 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 da. they've been eating since 7 a.m. whereas the group that's late time restricted eating doesn't start eating till noon. So if anybody is surprised by that, I've got a bridge in Brooklyn I'd like to sell you. So again, I, it's not a bad study or anything like that. 
I just know that it's going to get way more play in the press than it probably should. And the conclusions that the media are going to draw are just not going to be supported by what the data actually says. If you like these kinds of deep dives and you really are like, man, you know, I wish I could interpret research like Lane. I wish I could understand it better. I wish I could understand what the data was really saying to me. Go sign up for reps. Reps is my monthly research review where myself and James Longstrom, who's another member of our team, has a master's in exercise science, has conducted research in, in himself. We take five studies every month that are popular in fitness and nutrition, and we break them down in a way that's palatable and easy to understand for almost anybody. We also tell you, we agree with the researchers' conclusions, or hey, we don't agree with the researchers' conclusions, and here's why. And we tell you how the results of the study fit in the broader consensus of the other studies that are out there on similar topics. So make sure you click the link in the description and sign up for that. Catch you guys next week.